What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up. In this episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, uh, but I think a lot of you guys are going to like today's topic. In this video, we're going to be discussing the differences between the VIX and the VXX. There's actually a lot of uh, common misconceptions that people have between the VIX and the VXX. And, and there's actually a lot of important points when it comes to this subject. So in this video, I'm just gonna explain everything in simple, easy to understand terms. And uh, I think it's gonna be a great video. So if you guys aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe to see the daily videos on your YouTube homepage every single day. But besides that, we're gonna get right into the video. So uh, let's get started. What is the VIX? So uh, when we look at our charts, we can see that the VIX uh, we can see at the top right here, it says a CBOE market volatility index. So the VIX is an index, just like the S&P 500, just like the NASDAQ, just like the Dow. Uh, it's an index. It's not a stock. That means, you know, you, you can't just buy uh, the S&P 500 index. However, you can buy, like, for example, you can't buy the SPX. That's an index, but you can buy the SPY which is um, an ETF that tracks the SPX, which is the S&P 500. So uh, the VIX, VIX, that's an index. You cannot directly trade this. You cannot buy the VIX. Uh, however, you can uh, trade and buy the VXX, which is an, uh, technically it's an ETN. It's pretty much an ETF of the VIX. So uh, that's the first major point. Uh, the second thing, is the VIX, it's not like, like the VIX is a calculated index, okay? Uh, its values are very precise. There, it, it follows a model, right? It's not just like, um, it's not just determined by the market. I mean, in some ways it technically is, but the VIX is a calculated index, okay? And it's calculated based off of the values of the options on the SPX. So the higher, the, the more, the more expensive that the options are for the SPX, the higher the VIX is. And basically, because the VIX is a volatility index, the higher, the more expensive options are, uh, the more um, volatility that the market makers are expecting in the market. So the VIX uh, tracks the SPX's options values on a 30-day basis, okay? So they're, they're not tracking options that expire in two years from now. They're tracking it. Uh, on a 30 day basis. Okay. And like we already said earlier in this video, you cannot buy the VIX, right? It's an index. You can't buy any indexes. And we're going to get into the forward looking aspect of the VIX a little bit later in the episode, but now we're going to uh, shift over to the VXX. So uh, like we already covered, uh, the VXX is an ETN, which is very similar to an ETF. So when you think of the SPX, which is the S&P 500 index, um, and then you think of the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, right? Uh, that's just how the VIX and the VXX work. So uh, the VIX is just like the SPX and the VXX is just like the SPY. You can trade the SPY, you can trade the VXX. You cannot directly chain, uh, trade the indexes, which is the SPX or the VIX. So I'm, trying, I'm not trying to make this too complicated, but I'm trying to keep it easy to understand um, so yeah, uh, I have all the notes here just so everyone can look at those. Um, but VIX in the VIX and the SPX, uh, they cannot be directly traded, but their derivatives can be. So uh, you can trade options on the VIX. You can trade options on the SPX. You can trade futures on uh, the VIX, which is technically uh, the slash VX, right? Uh, slash VX, our volatility index. Futures, just like slash ES, are S&P 500 index futures. And then uh, with the uh, VXX, um, typically people like options traders normally resort to the VXX because their options are more liquid. So um, we're going to get more into that in a second. But also um, the VXX, you're probably wondering, like, how does the VXX replicate the movement of the VIX? And the answer to that is the VXX, uh, the, the company that, that runs this exchange traded note, um, actually holds VIX futures. So that's pretty much like, for example, if the VIX goes up, of course, those futures are going to rise in value. So if they rise in value, since the VXX 
holds those futures, the VXX is also going to rise in value. So uh, kind of think of, think of it like that. So, um, and now to the main point, right? Um, the VIX is used to represent the market's volatility expectations over the next 30 days. So it's just, it's like the, the options market all comes down to expectations. So uh, Tom and I always talk about playing earnings and why we don't like to play earnings. Um, just like Tesla uh, on their, yeah, on their most recent earnings, um, everyone was expecting a huge move. Like if I remember right, it might've been like a 12% move in a matter of two days, right? And Tesla ended up having like, like nowhere near that level. So uh, basically calls and puts fell in value. So um, a lot of times what happens in earnings releases is a stock will expect like a, a 15% expected move, right? Basically uh, the options market makers are saying that um, they are expecting this stock to move up or down 15%. And like, let's say the stock moves up like 5%. Uh, even if you bought calls on that stock, you will still lose money. So um, everything in the options market comes down to expectations. You can uh, buy the right, you could, you could predict the direction correctly, but if, it, if the stock doesn't move to meet expectations, you'll actually lose money. And, and you can actually do the opposite. So like, if you uh, go to like a stock like NIO right now, right? Uh, this stock has been extremely volatile. If you sell call credit spreads on this, you know, like let's say 10% out of the money and NIO only moves up 8%, uh, even though the stock went against you in terms of direction, you would still make money on this setup overall. So uh, everything in the options market comes down to expectations. And it's the same when it comes to the VIX. So the VIX, the VIX just represents um, pretty much the market makers volatility uh, expectations over the next 30 days. So for example, um, I'm gonna give you an example right here. If we look at the VIX, um, we can see that back before COVID really hit the markets, the VIX was sitting around, you could say, you would say about $14, right? Basically that means that market makers and, and investors in general are expecting about a 14% uh, volatility swing to the upside or the downside uh, in the market for the next 12 months. And that's pretty standard, you could say, right? The volatility was pretty low. But when COVID hit and the markets fell uh, faster than they have ever had in, in, in like at that point in time, um, the markets were just going crazy, right? So at the same time, um, like investors were scared and, and they didn't know what was going to happen in the markets overall. So the VIX ended up rising to 85, the $85 level. Now, what we can see is when, like before COVID happened, uh, everything was going great in the markets. The markets were breaking all time highs, like every week, um, the markets were just doing amazing. And there was, um, a, like a, a very low perceived, uh, low perceived, uh, risk in the markets. And that's why the VIX was so low. However, when the markets ex when the markets tanked and the VIX exploded up, people saw a lot of risk in the market because the markets were falling faster than ever. Uh, COVID hit and, and like the, the economy shut down. So everyone was kind of panicking. So uh, people also resort to the VIX to just judge what's going on in the economy right now. So uh, when the VIX is low, people aren't that scared. They feel confident in the market. They feel great in the economy. However, when the VIX is high, it shows that people and investors are scared and uncertain. All right. And then if we go back uh, here, uh, normally, like I said earlier in the video, um, normally options traders gravitate towards the VXX rather than the VIX uh, because their options are more liquid, but also they are American options rather than European options. So uh, if you guys never heard of the difference between American and European options, uh, basically they're, they're pretty different actually in a lot of ways. Um, a couple main differences is that American options can be exercised at any time while European options can only be exercised on their expiration date. So for example, like if you bought a call, like let's say we look at, let's say we look at Tesla, right? And let's say you bought like a seven, let's say you bought like a, a, a 150 strike call, right? back when the market was uh, very low back in March, right? 
And let's say this call expired in November, right? Um, with an American option, you can exercise your call option at any time. But with a European option, you can only exercise your option on the expiration date. So that's just one difference. Uh, there's a couple differences, um, like their cash settled. And yeah, like there's a lot of differences. We'll get more in depth in those differences in a later video. Um, but generally most, well, yeah, pretty much all uh, stocks are using American options. A lot of indexes use European options, all right? And then uh, just a final you know, recap, um, basically the VIX follows the prices, the options prices of the SPX, right? The higher the options prices are on the SPX, the higher the VIX is going to be. Okay, the VIX uses a mathematical model to price itself, right? The higher options are on the SPX, the higher the VIX is, right? So when the VIX rises, right, VIX futures rise. You know, if, if, if uh, gold rises, gold futures are going to rise. You know, it, it's just, that's how it works, right? Uh, so the VXX holds VIX futures. So when VIX futures rise, the VXX is going to rise, okay? So basically, when options get more expensive on the S&P 500, uh, the VIX is going to rise, and then um, eventually the VXX is going to rise too. So um, the, re the main reason I made this video is because I know there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about these two securities, and it's pretty important, and it's, it's just great to know the differences between them. Uh, I haven't really seen a great video that fully explains the differences uh, between those two securities. So I figured I'd make one. And uh, hopefully this answered your guys' questions. Uh, I feel like every single Friday, uh, Tom and I are going to do a more advanced uh, video topic for you guys. So uh, next week, we are most likely going to be doing an advanced option screener on Thinkorswim. So uh, if you guys want to see any specific videos, uh, just let me know in the comments down below and we can definitely make those happen. Uh, like I said, um, I made this video because I know there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, this topic among traders. And I actually had a couple people ask me about this topic uh, in the Discord chat this week. So uh, if you guys want to join the Discord chat, it's completely free. It's the first link in the description down below. And if you guys want any specific videos, let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.